Mayfield here, and it's time to go on another afternoon adventure. Good afternoon or good evening, depending on what part of the world you're joining us from today. My name is Major Justin George. I go by Chief. My friends call me that at least. I am here today in the Mojave Desert of Southern California, and more specifically, I'm at Edwards Air Force Base. Behind me is the United States Air Force Test Pilot School. I happen to be an instructor there, and it's a school not unlike what you're probably taking a break from right now, and hopefully we'll get back to here pretty soon. We have students and we have some of the best and brightest from all across the world, the best pilots, engineers and navigators that, that uh, the world can send us all to come here and learn at our school where we teach how to be flight test professionals. Uh, we've got all the boring stuff like tests, classes and reports, uh, not enough recess, but some of the best things that we do here is actually get to go fly. And today I want to share that with you. I want to take you out, show you some of our aircraft. Our students get to fly over 20 different aircraft while they're here at the school. But I'm going to show you just a small sample of those. I want to give you an idea of what it's like to fly as a test pilot or a test pilot student. So without further ado, let's get suited up and let's go out there. All right, guys, the first trip on our journey to getting ready to go fly is to stop here at what is called aircrew flight equipment. So this is where we keep all of our stuff that's going to keep us safe while we go do our, our missions out there and teach our brand new test pilots how to, how to do the test thing. So what you'll see here is a lot of lockers. So it might be similar to what you have uh, at your school, but uh, here we have our equipment. So each person, each student, each instructor has their own locker. And this locker, locker number 95, happens to be my locker. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna get ready to go fly. I'm gonna start with this, this piece of equipment here. So I'll unfold this here to give you a good look. These are actually um, pants, and I think you could probably tell me where these go, but any ideas on where I put these? That's right, they're pants, right? So this is called a G-suit. Uh, a G-suit is basically a, uh, an air bladder. So it's like a balloon, if you would, that, uh, that goes around our legs. So when we're out there flying, and we want to turn really quickly, um, what happens is our body goes one direction while the aircraft is going the other. And what that does is it causes our blood to go from the top of our bodies down to the bottom. In this case, that's really a bad thing because when the blood's not in my brain, it, it, uh, I can't think very well, right? So what we want to do is we want to squeeze that blood from our legs up into the top part of our body. So what this suit does, and it's plugged into the airplane, is air comes through, and these balloons fill up, right? And that basically gives our, our legs a big warm hug that pushes that blood back up to the top of our head here. So it's got a lot of snaps and zippers, and we kind of start here at the top and we zip it up down there at the bottom. It's got nice pockets for our things uh, to keep there, like our gloves and whatever else we might want to carry with us. And we'll get suited up here and zip it up just like that. All right, I've got my speed jeans on. Now what's next? Okay, so let's see. We have this. All right, where do you think this goes? It's got lots of buckles on it, I'll tell you that much. And it uh, is actually a harness. So we put this around us here, and this is more or less a, uh, a seat belt. And the uh, seat belt allows us to strap into the airplane. It also has straps up here that are going to attach to our parachute. So if something bad happens in the airplane, we have to get out quickly. We'll actually be hanging from this harness underneath our, our canopy, hopefully safe and sound on our way back to a soft landing on the earth. The last thing I'll ask you, so this one is kind of an easier one, but uh, where does this go? Yeah, this is actually a helmet, right? Quite obviously, it's going to protect my head if we have any issues out there or if we hit like a bird while we're flying. And it's, uh, it's going to provide some protection there, right? So I'm going to put it on like this, kind of like the Navy guys, right? We've got an oxygen hose here, so it provides oxygen. And last but not least, it's got a, uh, a sweet little visor there to keep my eyes safe and to block the sun while we're flying around. Okay, so we're going to tuck this into my bag here because I'm not going to wear that out to the airplane with me. That would be silly. Um, and we're going to walk out to the airplane. Are you, are you guys ready to go fly? Before we do that, I want to introduce you to some of my, uh, some of my good friends out there.
All right, guys, it's time to go flying. We're out here on Edwards Ramp. It's a, a world famous uh, place to be. It's basically an air show every day. Multiple different types of aircraft all out doing uh, unique and interesting things, leading the edge on a uh, flight test. So as we go to fly today, I'm gonna have some of my friends, some of my fellow instructors, Data and Growl, uh, tell you about the airplanes that they fly here uh, and some of the unique things that they do here at TPS. Hi, I'm Major Taylor Wilson. My call sign is Growl, and I'm here in the Edwards Maintenance Hangar to talk to you about the F-16 Fighting Falcon, also known as the Viper. It is a single engine, single seat, multi-role attack aircraft. We use it for testing new avionics and hardware that we put on the aircraft to send out to the fleet. So to give you a quick overview of some of the fun facts about this aircraft, how much do you think this airplane weighs? So this airplane weighs over 20,000 pounds and to put it in perspective, this weighs over five times the amount of a minivan that's sitting in your garage right now. And now second question, how much fuel do you think it has it has over 1,100 gallons of fuel. Now to talk to you about some of the other specifics, this aircraft can go over two times the speed of sound. And let's look at some of the hardware that helps us measure that. As we go over here to the front of the aircraft, what do you guys think this thing is? Now if you guys said the gun, yeah, we'll get to that here in a minute, but this thing measures the airspeed that we fly through the air. So going over two times the speed of sound, the air enters this pitot boom here, and then we can see that reading into the cockpit. And all these uh, different vanes, these metal things on the front of this boom, these measure the different angles that the aircraft is flying through the air. And these are special test articles that we use here at Edwards Air Force Base to test these aircraft. Now, as we start to move back towards the back of the airplane, we hit this big round metal dish out in front. All right, this dome here, what do you think is inside? If you guys said radar, you guys are exactly right. This thing has a mechanically sweeping radar that scans back and forth that looks over 100 miles away and uses radar to send signals out and measure and read how many different aircraft are out there in the sky kind of like how a bat can use its sonar and listen and figure out what's around it. So we use that to scan the, the skies and make sure it's clear of any enemies. As we move back, we take a look up at the canopy. It is a nice bubble canopy and it has no metal rails around it. And remember, this thing has to be so strong to withstand the forces of supersonic flight. We can see the heads up display or the HUD in the front that I look through to see all my flight information. And then look at the angle of the seat that I'm sitting at. That is slanted back. Imagine sitting in a recliner 30 degrees back and flying around your aircraft. That not only helps out uh, for pulling G's and looking behind me, but that also makes it for a really comfortable reclined seat ride. As we start moving down the aircraft, we see this intake here. This is where the air goes down into the engine. And there you can see the front of the fan where the air is gonna get compressed, heated up, and then spit out the back at really hot temperatures to give us that thrust that we need. As we look down underneath the intake, we have our three landing gear in a tricycle configuration. Those things fold up after takeoff uh, so that we're nice and clean and we're able to fly through the sky. We, uh, we extend those prior to landing and those give us a nice comfy ride on the ground driving around. So looking up here, this is our number one killer. This is our uh, six barreled gun and our cannon that fires forward. Uh, right now, we have it blocked off for safety reasons, uh, but this thing would be ready to go at a moment's notice. And we pull the trigger with our right uh, index finger uh, when we're ready to fire. As we move back uh, throughout the aircraft, we start to get a glimpse of the different flight control surfaces that are on the airplane. So uh, we have not only leading edge flaps that move along, as well as trailing edge surfaces that move to stabilize us through flying. We have four different computers that help me fly this aircraft, and it is not connected by bells and cranks and pulleys, but is actually just connected by wires 
uh, from the cockpit all the way to the flight control surfaces. So it is what's known as a fly-by-wire aircraft. So without those four computers helping me control the stability of the aircraft, I wouldn't be able to fly it. So imagine if this was a paper airplane and I'm throwing it out uh, towards the sky, that paper airplane would just start tumbling without those computers. So super cool and critical. As we move across to the edge of the wing, we see this missile rail right here. This is where our external weapons would go and, and or they would hang underneath the aircraft. We can mount heat seeking or radar guided missiles that can throw out there super far away. Uh, and uh, that is what we're uh, usually putting out on here. The aircraft sends power to these stations uh, and then we're able to uh, gather that so that I can use them in flight. As we look up at the top of the aircraft on the vertical tail, as you notice, there's a lot of different antennas that are sticking out above it. Uh, those all give us different measurements and feed into the cockpit. As you look at the tail, that ED, that stands for Edwards, for Edwards Air Force Base here in California. And then looking at the tail number there, a AF stands for Air Force, and then that first 87, that's the year that this aircraft was made. This thing is almost as old as I am, which is crazy. And then 352 is the designator to make sure that we know which aircraft is which, right, when we're flying around the sky. And then some very, very super critical system is attached to this aircraft, and that is what's called a spin chute. So that is that blue canister that's on the back of the aircraft, and it's attached to the top of the aircraft, and that allows us to regain control and to deploy a parachute to regain stability when we are testing this aircraft and intentionally putting it out of control. So imagine flying around the sky and then starting to tumble. When I tumble, I can deploy this parachute at the back and that can regain normal flying. So imagine if I'm driving in a car and I'm starting to skid on the ice and start sliding, I would be able to deploy this parachute at the back and straighten myself out so that I can safely recover and land the aircraft. So those are kind of the fun facts about this Edwards Tail 352 F-16 Fighting Falcon. Again, my name is Growl. I'm going to go ahead and send it over to Data to talk to you guys about the C-12. Hi, welcome to the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School. I'm Major Calvin Data Da Silva, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about the C-12C model. The C-12 at 12,500 pounds is one of the Air Force's smallest passenger and light cargo transport aircraft. Tell from the C-12 here, they're specially painted for our test mission at Edwards Air Force Base, uh, where we do different types of curriculum testing to develop the Air Force's next generation of test pilots. Uh, starting with the design features of this aircraft, we've got straight wing dihedral aircraft. Uh, what that means is the low location of the wings and the dihedral where the wing goes lower as it gets closer to the fuselage makes it so that we have better lateral stability in the aircraft when flying around. As you can tell from the wing, we've got uh, rubber attached to the front, and what that does is it sheds the ice that forms whenever we fly through visible moisture up at altitude. So the wings attached to the nacelles of the engines here, and the PT-6A develops 850 shaft horsepower of thrust. Uh, we have four bladed props that are fully reversible, which means that in addition to providing forward thrust, we can set the engines up so that we can actually move backwards on the ground as well. The fuselage shows that we have two-seat front cockpit here, and then we can see an additional seven people in the back. Lighting, uh, as well as icing protection and engine support, all allow us to go in all weather capabilities up to 31,000 feet. The second engine features what we like to appreciate as our air conditioning unit. Uh, for all the hot weather we have here at Edwards Air Force Base while testing, the engines can overheat. So we have a pretty robust fuel to engine intercooler that allows us to keep operating during all weather, uh, hot or cold. Both wings feature ailerons that are fully reversible, meaning that our flight controls can deflect them both up and down from each side. They are cable linked. In addition to our ailerons on the edges of the wings that control our directional movement, we have flaps which extend the amount of lift that each wing is capable of, as well as reducing drag, allowing us to fly with less power and at slower airspeeds. As you can see, 
we have two additional ventral fins on the back of the aircraft. And what these do is help with directional stability to keep the aircraft going in a straight line with better control for the pilots. Looking up, you'll notice that we have a horizontal T-tail high mounted well above the rest of the aircraft. Does anyone have any idea why that might be so far above? Well, I'll tell you, what that allows it to do is it keeps the horizontal control surfaces out of the airflow of the aircraft at high pitch angles or angles of attack. What that does is give us more control in the longitudinal axis or for pitch, allowing us to maintain better control at slower speeds. That kind of covers the outside of the aircraft. Why don't we take a look inside? Welcome aboard the C-12. This is our cockpit, as you can see, two-place aircraft for the pilot and the co-pilot. Uh, coming into the aircraft, a couple things you'll notice right off the start is instead of a steering wheel, we've got a yoke. The yoke is fully reversible, meaning I can go forward, backward, left, and right, and control all portions of the flight control system that way. Additionally, for the tail section, I have these rudder pedals here, which unlike go and stop, they actually make the tail turn left and right. So I can just push those in here, which gives me the ability to control direction in flight as well as steer the nose on the ground. Looking here in the middle, we have three levers uh, sets that control the aircraft performance. So on the left, I have my power levers, and those control how much power is going to the actual engine. I have my prop levers that control the blade angle and the rotation speed of the propellers. And then I have my fuel condition levers, which control uh, whether I'm in a high fuel state or a low fuel state at idle power. Additionally, we have trim tabs that help with uh, aircraft control for the flight control surfaces. We've got three radios, uh, which we use to talk to outside agencies, such as the tower or other aircraft as needed. And then we have a flight management unit and two separate computers that allow us to create flight plans for where we want to go today on travel. Looking up above at our glare shield, um, we've got a pretty good visibility outside with some windshield wipers in case we come across any rain. Looking above, we have all of our electronic controls and starting control functions, as well as our fuel control panel, which shows out of the 544 gallons available to the aircraft, how much we actually have on board today. Uh, coming through the aircraft cockpit, I've got my primary flight display, which shows my attitude. Brown represents the ground and blue represents the air, as you can see outside. It also tells me how much I'm banking or turning, uh, what my pitch angle is, and what my navigational directional control is. On the left side, we have an airspeed indicator, which tells me how fast I'm going. And on the right side, we have an altitude indicator, which tells me what our height above ground or our height above sea level is. The center display is used as our map function, and that allows us to see not only where we're going in reference to outside navigational aids, but also where other aircraft are in relation to our aircraft. We have two engine stacks for the left and right engine, respectively, and they tell us measurements of torque, propeller RPM, or how fast each propeller is spinning the temperature of the engine, its output, and how much fuel we're using. And we have additional nav -A controls for where we're going in the United States. That about wraps it up for the C-12. Back to you, Chief. Hey guys and gals, uh, it's Chief here again. I hope you enjoyed uh, what you learned from Data and for Grail. I hope you enjoyed their aircraft. Now it's time for us to go flying in ours. And today we're gonna go flying in the mighty T-38 Talon. So Grail told you that his F-16 Falcon was older than he was or almost as old. I'll tell you this aircraft, which was designed back in 1950 and, and built in 1960, is probably older than your parents and probably older than your grandparents. Um, this is a great aircraft I'm going to walk you through as we go by to do our walk around uh, to get ready to go fly. This aircraft is the first supersonic jet trainer uh, the Air Force had and it is a great trainer that's why we still use it today. It has a lot of interesting things we teach our students when we go fly. Um, this aircraft itself is a supersonic trainer which means it can go faster than the speed of sound. Grouse said his, his plane flies f faster than two times the speed of sound. Well this aircraft will do about one times the speed of sound which is pretty impressive for an old girl, right? Uh, it also has multiple or had multiple uh, records, one of which was climbing to 40,000 feet in uh, just over a minute and a half, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you around it while we look at uh, some interesting things and we get ready to go fly. So the first thing we'll start with is uh, the, what's called the pitot probe, right? So Grell kind of gave you a hint on this one. Um, what do you think this does? Yeah, if you said the gun, yep, you're wrong. Um, it's actually a sensor, so it allows us to see how fast we're going 
and, um, and gives us information for while we're flying around. As we move along here, uh, we'll see the cockpit of the aircraft. So the T-38 is a two-seat trainer. Um, it depends on who we are flying with, right? If, the, uh, if we're flying with an engineer or a navigator uh, test student, uh, they'll be in the back seat and the instructor pilot will sit up front. If we're flying with a, a test pilot student, they'll sit up front and we'll sit in the back. Um, here we have the intakes for the aircraft and um, that's where the air comes in and gets squeezed and then shot out the back. Um, here we have the, here is the wing. So an interesting feature about the T-38 is it has a really slim wing. It's really, uh, really narrow. That, that helps it to fly fast. Another cool thing about the T-38 is it has what's called a Coke bottle shape. Um, you can kind of see it's really sleek and it kind of starts wide at the front and it kind of narrows down to the middle and it gets wide at the end. Again, that's part of the design back in the 50s and 60s. They thought that was best for flying supersonic. So yeah, that's why it looks like a Coke bottle. If you look at your Coke bottle, you can tell that it has a similar shape as this airplane. Uh, the other thing we'll look at back here is again, the gear. It's a tricycle gear aircraft, just like in the F-16, just like your tricycle back at home. And that's a nice stable configuration for us when we're taxiing around on the ground and also when we're landing. All right, moving back to the back of the aircraft, we'll see that this aircraft has two engines, unlike the F-16, which only had one. This aircraft has two engines. I personally uh, like aircraft that have eight or more engines, but uh, today two engines will be acceptable for us. Uh, back here you again see the tail. So the tail of the aircraft keeps the pointy end going forward. It also lets us, uh, lets us know where this aircraft is from. Again, ED uh, from Edwards. And can you tell me when this aircraft was made based on what Grau told you earlier? If you answered 1965, you'd be right. Uh, moving along to the side here, I'll point out some of these little flaps back here, right? So this little flap, and it, it moves in, in the air. This allows us to turn the aircraft. This aircraft has an incredible roll rate. It can actually do two full turns in a second. So that's 720 degrees in one second. You can imagine the kind of ride that would be if you were up front uh, controlling it. All right, continuing moving around here. We're back up to the front. We'll get hopped in, get ready to go here. But one last thing I want to point out to you before we hop in. Uh, you can see it's marked with danger here. This is our ejection seat. So the ejection seat in the T-38 is a great insurance device for us. It's a great safety feature. It allows us to get out if we get into a situation that we can't recover the aircraft from. It's basically a rocket. So you're sitting on a rocket in your seat. There's a handle in between your legs. If you find yourself in a bad situation, you pull the handle, you rocket out of the aircraft, and then hopefully you're ending up in a chute suspended by your harness here, uh, nice and safely back to the ground. With that, I say we hop in and we get going. All right, now we're in the cockpit. We're gonna go ahead and get fastened. There is no shortage of buckles in the aircraft. We're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. I'm not gonna buckle them because it would uh, take me a while, but uh, to get ready, we would start with our legs. There's actually buckles that go around our legs. They go around our ankles, around our knee, and those keep our legs in place. If we have to eject, we pull this handle, we go riding uh, the rocket up, and our legs get tucked in nice and safe for us to keep us clear. Uh, we have a seat belt, just like you would in your car, and we actually have shoulder harness belts too that come here and fit in to our harness so that keeps us nice and safe uh, again like we talked about earlier I have my g-suit hose right so that goes there and I plug that into uh, the aircraft itself and that allows it to inflate remember those bladders or balloons will fill up and and keep the blood from going down into my legs and then we have oxygen as well and we plug in our oxygen to let us breathe through our mask and through our helmet so once we're all strapped in we're basically ready to go um, again we've got the the stick to control the the aircraft we've got our throttles over here that make us go faster we've got all kinds of fun gauges to look at to tell us what's going on with the aircraft we've got a heads up display here that allows us to see what's ahead of us while still seeing um, important things about our aircraft. All right, guys, that's the end of our tour. I hope you enjoyed your time here at Edwards Air Force Base with us today, and I hope you learned something. Um, I would say keep studying, do your best uh, now that you're at home, and then also when you get back to school so that one day you can uh, end up at the test pilot school with us. And uh, yeah, good luck to you guys, and we'll see you.